Maybe they could fill it up with something. You're the principal. Don't call me. I cannot read and interpret the college board scores for the senior class. Hell, I need prompting to read and interpret the exit signs at the movie theaters. Oh, stop preaching! So, so the seniors are boosting the freshmen. How the hell can I help you? I know, I know. Why don't you, why don't you split them up into teams and have intramural goosing? <laughs> you know, this is the sixth time that you called to say that it's nearly graduation time. I'm walking around this house, I'm in pomp and circumstance. Uh -huh. Oh, come on, think of me. Gertrude was only your vice principal. She's my only living relative, you dumb bastard.
handle the altar boys. Oh, she never mentioned church work to me. The perfect Christian soul. Oh, sure. Christ, she leaves town and the holy water's polluted. <laughs>
the way, why did you wear that brown skirt and white blouse? You know, you're starting to look an awful lot like a Tipperillo. <laughs> <laughs> The 
the garbage disposal is broken. It knew you were lost. It tried to take over the house. It got the cord for the can opener, a butter knife, a jelly jar, four dish rags, and my time at self wine. Go put your ear next to the drain board. You can still hear it ticking. John Cameron Swayze would be proud. Are you going to tell me where the hell you've been? Why did you do all this to me? I'm sorry, but I... Gertrude, I was scared. I'm sorry, but something happened. I you know, to do it. don't you ever leave like that again. You know, if you left to punish me or something because I cursed at you, well, I'm sorry. But don't you ever leave like that again. You know, you know, I slept downstairs because the upstairs was so empty. And, and then when you're not here, the, the pipes, they, they clink in the basement. It scares the hell out of me. I can't stand it. I'm sorry. I wasn't punishing you. But why didn't you ask Joanne about the oven and everything? I had some pride. She already knows what a worthless son of a bitch I am. She opened cans for me. She let me cry on her shoulder. She even offered to lend me money. Money? I didn't have any money. The Prudential man was ready to left on my insurance. You know, if I died while you were gone, the neighbors would have found 14 cents to my name. Hell, they won't even start the embalming machine for less than a quarter. I'd have to go as I am. Well, I pinned the key to this and the car keys to your house coat. On your collar. So that's what's been jingling. That's what's been playing pop and circumstance. You did think about me before you left. What did you think about me while you were gone? Well, I thought about everybody and everything. What happened to Perky? Perky who? Oh, I don't think he's been fed. It's dead. Oh, Perky is dead. Well, I, I guess I'll just have to throw him out here. Oh, that's harsh. It's a dead bird. What the hell do you want me to do? Drive to Arlington Cemetery? Oh, I have four other parakeets buried in the vegetable garden, and you killed them by forgetting to close the door to the cage and just letting them fly away. Over the years, you've killed hundreds of goldfish because you threw butts in the tank upstairs. Well, there are some things you've just got to take care of, Madeline. You, you could have been perfect! Wait a minute! Don't change the subject! I can be myself, damn it! Hey, wait, there's only two things left in the pantry! Drain out and Epsom salt! For tonight, we have a choice for dinner! We can either uh, clean the toilet or soak our feet! You tell me where the hell you've been! An elephant in heat has more patience than I do! I was in Vermont. What? I was with a man named Erwin Lee. Wait a minute here! I'm on the brink of suicide with 14 cents to my name! I can't afford to kill myself because I had I cost 19 cents. And you're off playing Sodom and Gomorrah in Vermont? It wasn't like that. Irwin is standing at the front door now. I told him how you'd be, but he wanted to introduce himself. Hello, I'm Irwin Lee. <laughs> Who the hell is he? Someone I've been seeing. You didn't You've been to play. seeing? Yes. Oh, he's <laughs> my very special friend. <laughs> I thank you, Gertrude. The only reason why I'm not on the floor right now is because it's so dirty. But consider me patient. He's a fine man, Natalie. He's been alone all his life, as have I. He cares for me. He really does. I really don't deserve him. Just how long have you had this geriatric crush? A few months. Huh? He owns the bowling alley. Well, it's the only place I ever go. Do you know what it's like bowling alone? You bowl a spare or an impossible strike. You spin around with a tingle up your back and there's nothing there but empty leather seats. Well, all I could look forward to was the ball coming back down the ramp. And then one night after I pulled a strike, I spun around. And Erwin was sitting there clapping. Ta-da! Let's call MGM! They'll make a sex movie out of this! So he asked me. Oh, oh, and then I pretended I didn't know how to keep score, so then he talked to me. Oh, put it this way. Well, and then I showed him how he could expand the number of alleys. Well, it was just a matter of moving the pinball machine and restructuring the snap bar and displacing a few unimportant supporting beams. You need your beams restructured! Vermont? Well, we went up there to buy the equipment. Well, I had a chance to see Vermont, and, well, Erwin uh, wanted me a lot to help him bargain. Help him bargain? Look at her, Josephine the Jew! What I want to know is why you didn't tell somebody? Why didn't you tell me? Oh, I know you, Madeline. You'd have found some way to follow my plans. No. You've made conniving an art form, and you are its Mozart. You know, you just wanted to meet somebody. 
just that. This whole thing is more than just a crush. Something vibrant has happened to me. And when it did, well, what a disgrace to say it, but I just didn't care about the high school. The church, the community chess drive, the reading to the blind. Well, I thought I was so smart. Well, if I'm so smart, how come I can't get out of this all gracefully? Well, I thought after three weeks, maybe this all would have just disappeared. But I can see by the looks of this house, and the size of that little bandage on your finger that the community is the same way. You know, you're right. But what I want to know is why you only took whiskey, bra, and panties. What did Erwin bring? Jockey shorts and ginger ale? I didn't need any clothes. He bought me a whole new wardrobe. That's what I carried in. Now, he's not a big spender, so buying me the wardrobe was a good indication that he's fond of me. Gertrude, what went on up there? Nothing. We went up to price equipment. The three of us just wanted to get away. Three? Three of you? Gertrude, have you been taking hormone shots? Oh, God, mind you have. His mother was with us. His, his, his mother? His mother? My name is Erwin Lee. My name is Erwin Lee. Is he trying to find someone to blame it on? Oh, was that necessary? Oh, sorry, Erwin. So that's his mother out there in the car? Why hasn't she moved? I thought it was a roll of carpeting. She's asleep. She's up in her 80s. I took the whiskey for her. She claims it keeps her heart ticking. She drinks whiskey like that? It's a wonder she'd know if her heart wasn't ticking. Well, she claims it keeps the blood flowing through her heart. Flowing? It probably staggers from ventricle to ventricle. Well, she doesn't like her. She's very upset about her winning. Upset? Gertrude? Just how serious is this? You tell me! We're planning to be married. Married? Well, we've wanted to do it for weeks, but every time he gets around about it, his mother gets sick. Why, she brings on an attack of crying and the way some women do my tears. You can't get married. Why not? Because, because you're 58 years old. Hell, your next sacrament's supposed to be the last rites. Not holding matrimony. Oh, no. Many people older than I am get married every day. Who? Who older than you in his right mind has gotten married? Well, that history teacher, Dr. Julius Holt. He got married when he was 67. You're right. And on his honeymoon, he had a heart seizure trying to take off his T-shirt. Oh, Madeline. Uh, many people get married at all different times. Gertrude, days. you're not many people. You're my sister. You know, you've got responsibilities around here. And what about your job? What about John Adams High? You know, the students are goosing each other to death. And you're responsible. It's as if you have the hand that was doing the goosing. I'm not going back. Gertrude, you're an educator. You're not, you're not 58 years old. You're 112 semesters old. Well, then they'll just get someone else. For once in my life, I want to do something crazy. You are crazy. Well, we agree then. Agree? What do you know about this man? Who is he? My name is Erwin Leach. Pleased to meet you. Oh, I have to listen to this. Oh, my God. Look at the two of them. The rigor mortis twins. <laughs> so much oh, I to leave me alone in this smelly old house. I don't want to be alone! I won't. Hello, Captain McFadden. Yeah, Miss Bassett, she's home. But don't call off the Harbor Boys yet. Just tell them now they're looking for Madeline Bassett, the lonely, helpless sister. Not Gertrude, the horny one. <laughs>
They all look as if they know what they're doing, even though they're just following the person in front of them. Yeah, Bozo Kerrigan, the gym teacher, can help you. Yeah. K-E-R-R-I-G-A-N. Don't say. Don't say. Yes, that's right. You find the, the gym teacher in the, yeah, in the gymnasium. That's right. See how you're picking it right up? Oh, bye bye. Three nights. All because you want to get married. 
you know, in, in these Vermont pictures, Erwin is very distinguished looking. Oh, thank you. Well, they would be less blurry, but Mrs. Leeds was drunk and kept bumping into me. <laughs> if only she and Madeline would accept us. I'd like a cigarette. I'm going out for a pack. Would you mind watching the phone in case Madeline calls? I'll be right back. Hey.
I must have fainted because the next thing that happened, I, I was in the next alley wrapped in nothing but a blanket to, with freak out written on my forehead. Well, uh, I, I asked the cab driver to take me home and he wouldn't even open the door until I told him I was a Hindu from the UN. <laughs> I climbed in through a window, paid him and I've been up in the attic ever since. These are the only clothes that were up there. So that's my story. How much did Gertrude worry? No, I think she's more concerned about her marriage. Oh, Gertrude's the only one that loved me, and even she doesn't care anymore. I think that she's going to get married whether you show up or not. No. And I can't talk to her anymore, either. You know, we haven't talked since college. You know, good morning, pass the salt, where's the old team, good night. If I ever said anything more than that, she, she'd think I was delirious with fever and she'd put me to bed. You know, if there's ever a crisis around here, Gertrude always solves it. Talk. We can't talk anymore. Hell, when I scream at her now, it's like screaming at someone I just met. You need to get to know her. Talk to Irwin. Irwin? Fred Fruit said everything I wanted to at 3 a.m. this morning. Hmm. Like I said, I, I think they're going to get married. Well, there's a chance she won't do anything until she can find me. I'm going to go back up in the attic with the bugs before I lose my seniority on the quilt. How do you know I won't tell her that you're up there? Huh? You do, and I'll, I'll set fire to your sewing bag. You'll starve. The girl just wants to get married. Girl? Three days ago, she was a spinster. You make a white dress for her, and suddenly she's a girl? Erwin's 64. What's he, boy? She designed that dress herself. Huh. Did you make a matching orthopedic garter for the boys in the bowling league? <laughs> Would you get a hold of yourself? How can I help it if I'm hostile? From up in the attic, I can hear Gertrude the teeny buffer talking for hours on the telephone. She listens to Frank Sinatra albums while she cleans the house. She swishes around like some dumb spring bitter ass or something. Did you know that she made a mock-up of Irwin made out of pillows and rags to measure the cubic feet of sleeping space needed? Hell, the mock-up is better looking than Irwin is. Well, I am fond of both of you, but the kids just want to get married. Kids? A minute ago she was a girl, now she's a kid. Another minute I'll be anticipating Gertrude's birth, for Christ's sake. <laughs> Take a look at this picture. Tell me if there's something wrong with Irwin. He looks effeminate. That's Mrs. Lee. <laughs> oh, you know, she looks like she could give an eyewitness account of the Stone Age. What have you got against old women? Nothing, damn it. That's why I'm standing here in a purple robe and sneakers, like some Passion Week tennis player, to prove the point that we're old women. Ooh, she's home. Oh, what is she going around to the back door for? I don't know, maybe to pay Mr. Pigatel. Well, how am I going to get back upstairs? Oh, I'll have to hide in here. All right, listen. Don't stand near the closet. Don't walk near the closet. Don't even look towards the closet. Oh, when, when Gertrude comes in, tell her you notice that she had a flat tire and send her out the front door so I can get up the back. All right, now, shh. Madeline's in the closet, Gert. <laughs> Go home and make yourself a handkerchief and stuff it down your throat. Let me wash your Don't touch any part of me. I still have lava soap burns from Mr. Rojas. She lived in New York one day, went to an LSD party, and then came back home. She's been living in the attic, belching at mom. You've been living here? Then those obscene phone calls are on our bill? Oh, forget it. I made most of them after six when the rates had changed. <laughs> you were living home. You didn't know that. Did you start to cry? Did you call Captain McFadden? Did you go to pieces? Did you go crazy? Did you get diarrhea from too much jello and ginger ale? Would you like a doctor to look at you? No! I'd like you to look at me, damn it! I did all this for you, dear! Now, 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 you girls, we're just talking about this. Cooperate. Oh, talk, right. I'll list all the good things about this marriage. You and Erwin won't be able to have children, right? I suppose not. Suppose not? My God, you and Erwin couldn't have kids if you had St. Jude at the end of the bed dressed as a cheerleader. <laughs> You're not getting married for children. Don't start listing all my 
You've got a good income. You're well respected in the community. When one more muscular dystrophy drive, you'll be ten points ahead of Jesus Christ. Oh, this is stupidity. My point is why? 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 Because on New Year's Eve, I went to Times Square alone. I had a little horn hidden in my coat, and at midnight I tooted it a couple of times, and then I came home, alone. Last Easter, I gave some money to some little street children so they could go buy an ice cream. They stole my purse and ran away. Last Christmas, I went to Netflix for a hot dog, and then I went to a movie. It was a love story, but I felt like a peeping Tom. <laughs> On my birthday last year, I rented a man to take me to Sardis. What a disgrace I am. He was 25 years old. The waiter wanted to put us at separate tables. <laughs> Don't you understand? Madeline, you have a lot of friends. She's just got Irwin. Irwin and I love each other. Madeline, we need each other. Love? You talk about love. Who's going to come around here? I can't even use the washing machine by myself. And what about Irwin's mother? You know, her heart only beats when he takes her to bars. Well, she'll be quite happy in an adjoining apartment. In those pictures, she looks like you're taking her to, to death row. And what about me? Who gets custody of me? The state? I was hoping you could have a life of your own. No, I can't have a life of my own. I can't even peel a banana without instructions on the side. <laughs> Why not? Why not? Because ever since I was a kid, I always screwed everything up. Anything I tried to do, she always did it better. So after a while, I just let her do everything. You know, if you were more of a screw-up, I'd be a whole person today. <laughs> we can start learning and do it tomorrow by being the major of honor. <laughs> Me, major of honor, oh, sure, right. And then Pig and Adele can, can walk you down the aisle. Oh, and Erwin's mother can be the flower girl. Carried by six pallbearers. <laughs> Hello. Oh, hold on. It's Father Hunt. Oh, it's about the ceremony. I don't want to talk to him right now. Oh, just tell him to do the uh, in sickness and death part. That'll cover the whole damn marriage. <laughs> I'm sorry, Father. Oh, <laughs> 
she accidentally locked herself in. I thought she ran away. I came back. Get the key from her. Let me out of here. Have you got the key? Oh, well, she thinks I do, but I don't. Search her. Search her? I can't search her. We're not even married. Oh, for God's sake, I want to get out of here now. Make a premarital search. Everybody's doing it today. <laughs> I don't know where the key is right now, Madeline. Meet Irwin. Irwin, meet Madeline. It's good to see you. Mrs. Leeds, meet Madeline. It's good to meet you. Who the hell am I meeting, Irwin? Oh, and this is Joanne, my neighbor. My neighbor tells the future Madeline. It's nice to meet you, but I'm Joanne. Just smile to the door, Mother. She can see you through the keyhole. Oh, for Christ's sake, I don't know how you people can make all these things. Mother, why 
Why can't we all make up? On Thanksgiving, we can thank each other. On Christmas, we can give each other gifts. On New Year's, we can sing old Lang Syne together. Yeah, and on the 4th of July, we can blow each other up! Start with rabies to get closer to your sister than me. It's our last chance at life, Irwin. Madame Tussauds told me I should be aware of this day. Mother's a fortune teller fanatic. She consulted Madame Tussauds about our marriage. Cost me five dollars a shovel for it. Excuse her for today. Madame Tussauds has been right a lot of times. She predicted the divorce of Mrs. Schultz to the day. At the time of her prediction, Madame Dussault was sleeping with Mr. Schultz. <laughs> you never talk to me like that when she's not around. In Vermont was the first time you ever called me a clumsy drunk, Madame Dussault. Oh, I am not Madame Dussault. No wonder you talk about her behind her back like that. If your mother were alive, she would. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not taking 
squeeze the ball. You're turning. Squeeze. I don't think you're going to get your strength back. You don't squeeze. I'm not strengthening my arm. I'm just weakening the goddamn ball. <laughs> I stopped filling up this ball. All right, fine. One cup of hot tea coming up. Oh, and you can just stop it with that bell before I bring your neck. I missed her 
loud voice. I used to tell the kids, if they didn't eat, I'd get this basket to yell at them. Now the stroke, feeding's lost four pounds. Well, a bell will shut up inside her long before this. It's so quiet around here. Last night after supper, I just went out driving around, blowing my horn and waving at people. A policeman stopped me, thought I was selling heroin. <laughs>
you just love her. She's got everything done with three-step method. Took God six days to be in Europe, but Kurt would have eliminated three big things or something. Well, I think you should go now and let Gertrude and the bird get acquainted. Why can't I see them get acquainted? Is there something that goes on between a woman and a parakeet that I don't know about? I mean, after all, I'm the father. Uh, well, there is a three-step method of getting acquainted that does not include the father. <laughs> I think we should let her rest now. Getting a bird takes so much out of you. Not I hear a chirp. You bought it. <laughs> if you were just bought and sold like a slave, would you want to do a number? I appreciate your gift, for when really. But our affair is in its final step. The goodbye step. So, goodbye. I can't get you out of my mind. You do something to me. They had to remove your picture from the cash register. I was making the wrong change. I know, but I... I never made the wrong change over anyone before. Well, we can be together. Until now and settled. She wants you to go. Really? Yes, Ellie. <laughs> <laughs> Miss What now? Paralyzed. 
Well, let's just leave before she pretends to be a hen and you have to collect the eggs every week. Oh, I can't just leave. That woman is sitting in there squeezing a ball and letting tea drool down the side of her mouth. Just to keep me here. That's a basis for a friendship? Get a ball and a pot of tea or she'll fall at your feet. Do it. You're upsetting her. Well, Gertrude letting her sister do the same thing she did 40 years ago, stealing. She's stealing Ralph all over again, and you're letting her do it. Now get her out of here. Stab her out of this. Come on, one last try. I spent three weeks with Madeline while you two were in Vermont. There's nothing wrong with her. Oh dear, Joanne's right. Well, yes, yeah, suppose that you knew you only had a short time to live. I'm 66. You're 66. Oh, all right. All right, stop. We'll give her one last jolt, and then I hope you'll all be satisfied. Bring her in. Uh, I hope I don't laugh at the old speech mates. Just go along with what I said. I hope I'm not too sadistic.
And next time, if you throw a heart attack, instead of a doctor, we'll call the William Morris agent. Oh, do me a favor. Go home and throw your lower lip to your eyebrows. She certainly is an actress, though. You sound as if you want to give her an Academy Award. I'm just impressed, that's all. I never met an actress. When I think of those blood-thinning injections, every day, you know, my rear end looks like a dartboard. My blood's so thin, I don't even cast a shadow anymore. Well, you have no one to blame but yourself. You know, if I didn't have to smoke, I could have gone on for months, years. You're not sorry after all we did for you. Who asked anybody? You did. What? You wrote down on your little pad, tell everybody to come and see me. I, it was probably all those x-rays that screwed up my thinking. You know, if you put me near a Geiger counter, you could hear begin the beginning. You don't care about all those people who help you? You help too much. You know, you're always over here. Doesn't it feel funny going home at night and, and sleeping in a strange bed? You didn't say that when I rushed over here like Mary of the Cross with newspapers and orange juice. And Flo and Maggie sat in the chapel crying and lighting candles every day. Well, the nuns thought they were arsonists. Oh, it was probably my week to try. And all the neighbors called, and Captain McFadden sent four issues of True Detective. It was something seeing them all fawn over me. Come on, Gertrude. We can do whatever we want now. Well, I'm getting married again. I wonder if Josh Agamore started this way. My whole body is pulsating. There it goes again. I'll get the car started. You're in? I'll need a witness. Wait a minute! After all this, you're just gonna leave me here like some post-menopausal Robinson Crusoe? It's all right, Madeline. Everything's gonna be all right. I'm not leaving out of malice. But if I don't walk out this front door now, I never will. All right, I'll cut my wrist. You won't enjoy a moment of his pulsating body. <laughs> she acted like a plane crash victim when she cut her finger. She will not slip her wrist. Oh, I know. My blood's so thin, I'll stand on my head and let it pour out my ears. <laughs> Have a nice honeymoon, Gertrude. <laughs> oh, if I find a cadaver standing on its head, I'll identify the body for you. The crash is collected on Thursday. What? Joanne will help you with the storm windows if you won't call me. Call you? You think I call you? Call anybody? You know, if I wasn't afraid of hurting myself, I would commit suicide uh, right now. Keep your pulsating hand on that heart. <laughs> keep the thermostat on 60 until October. What? There's money in the strong box. Oh, and I'll transfer the bank account to your name. Shop carefully. Uh, let's see, make sure the car is tuned up. But above all in winter, don't forget the antifreeze. Oh, Christ, in winter, I can't even find my mittens. Oh, well, do, you, do you think you could manage to hook up the air conditioning to the heating? No. This summer, I'll go back to the old way. A pygmy with a palm leaf. I can't do all those things. You've listed a lifetime of chores in 30 seconds. Oh, go on, go on. I don't want to talk about it anymore. Well, go on. What are you waiting for? Joanne and Erwin are going to have an affair on the driveway. <laughs> I guess this is it. I hope this won't be goodbye, Madeline. I hope you can do something you like. I am. I'm going to die. But no hard feelings. I'll see you again at the funeral. Come early. Stay all night. I'll probably see you before you die, Madeline. How can you be so sure? Oh, I've got to defrost the refrigerator June 18th. Hey, oh. my my friend over with a crack throw you off. Oh, what am I going to do with myself? What am I going to do? Well, you know, I have a few ideas. What? What can I do? Well, you know, I have a... I, I'll tell you what you can do. Oh, quick. Tell me. Tell me what I can do. All right, you know what you can do? What? I'll tell you what you can do. Tell me. Tell me what I can do. Well, tell me what I can do! Come on! I'm not going to tell you. Why? Why not? Gertrude, hurry up. Irvin's got a chunch on you. He's a guy in his town in the bathroom with his tie right now. <laughs> no, no, you don't answer it. Somebody wants something from you. Oh! Mount Calvary here! Crucifix 3 speaking! What? Oh. Oh. Hello? Oh. Yes, hang on. Margie Kretschner? Oh. She would like to know if you'd be mad if she named her illegitimate baby after you. <laughs> 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 
Well, I'm, uh, I'm five feet four. <laughs> 